Then I started using my former dira, I cut it into pieces, I hide it, I just wear it, go to school. So I uh, just went into the toilet. I didn't know, I didn't know what was happening. So when I'm coming out, I just look back and see a stain. It is very difficult for me being a woman and for me being a young girl to talk to men, especially Maasai elders about menstruation. And one of the things about menstrual cups and reusable products mm -hmm. or pads is you need to also have access to clean water. Hello, I am Tamima and welcome to the Real Talk Roundtable. Now, on today's episode, we're going to be addressing a very important issue, menstrual health. Unfortunately, menstruation remains a very natural biological process, but for some reason in our society, women are cultured to have what is commonly referred to as period shame. I mean, just recently, a young girl took her life because she was shamed during her period. Now, on today's episode, my guests are going to be sharing with us their period stories, and we're going to talk about this process. And if you're a woman and if you're a man, I invite you to please join the conversation. Let me know what your experience has been when it comes to menstruation. So we're just literally gonna be breaking it down this is a show that I'm gonna warn you right now it's gonna have a lot of TMI but that's the whole idea we are trying to break down that stigma around menstruation which is a very natural process so I have with me guests will be sharing their stories starting off with on my right I have Abshira Hussein she's 29 years old I also have with me Fina Akinyi who is 19 years old and Esther Wangu who is 20 years old so we are all women we have that in common yeah. and we all get our period yes and just to try and invite everyone to join this conversation i'm sure you have a period story when did your period start did anybody talk to you about it have you had embarrassing moments with your period what would you want to tell the world when it comes to your period and if you're a man this conversation is for you because as men you have daughters and you have wives so you must understand this most natural of, of processes called menstruation or using slang the period mm -hmm. so maybe let me start with you abshira because you say that for you probably when you got your period as a young woman mm -hmm. it was a bit of a confusing time yeah um okay i remember i was in class eight by then and i was 13 years old um when i got my periods and I had to hide it from everyone. I was staying with my mom and my sisters. So it was like uh, I couldn't expose, I couldn't tell anyone. And how old were you then? I was 13 years so old. 13 years old? <laughs> yeah. In the house with mom, how many sisters? I had my two sisters and one brother of mine. And your sisters were older than you? Yeah, yeah, they and were older than me. Still you felt still you had to hide I it, why? I felt that, I don't know, it was so confusing. Then what I, what, what I went and what I did was, uh, I had to hide it. I don't know why I was hiding it. I, I, I felt like I was ashamed, I don't know, to get my periods. Maybe I was too young. I don't know what was going in my head by then. And but had anyone had the conversation with you prior, like to t tell you what a period is? None. So that when it comes, you don't think like, oh my God, I'm sick, something is happening. None. <laughs> so nobody had had that chat yeah, with me. Yeah, nobody had that chat with me. I don't know, unfortunately. Then I was like, what is happening? Where is, where is this blood coming from? So I was like confused. I couldn't understand my biology. Nobody ever shared with me, you know, and this and this is supposed to happen. This is what you're supposed to do. Then I was in a mental, as I, you know, I was in a place where I, was, where, where I was confused a little bit. So I think that's why I hid from everyone. So how yeah. did you figure it out? Because there you are, there's blood. Mm. Nobody has explained to you what this blood means. <laughs> so I tried to stop it coming I, I put it in my head that i have to stop this blood from wherever it's coming from uh -huh. then so I it's almost like you're leaking <laughs> you're trying to stop the leak yeah so i tried to look for my cotton that this somali cloth that it's so comfortable it's called dera then i started using my former dera i cut it into pieces i hide it i just wear it go to school no more now the worst you know experience that i had with my period is when the things started overflowing. So I was ile, 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 ile dira, kitambara, kitambara. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think I put it in a. I don't know how it happened. So I'm in class, morning, break time. Everybody's looking at me. I started, you know, soiling my clothes. Mm. I waited. Now it's break time. Go back home, running. I never came for two, <laughs> for three days. You stayed at home <laughs> yeah. because you were embarrassed. Yeah. Then. You know, you know, when you are, we are at home, Somali culture, we usually do the work at home. You know, you are being told, you know, the 
washing the utensils today it's for you you know it's you who is supposed to do this then i was like sitting crossed my legs like this my mom is like what is really happening here and she still <laughs> didn't figure it out that no you she no she didn't so she's like come what is going on that's when i was like something oh shit come 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 then that's when she tried to explain to me everything and then now the biggest challenge was eh, the other challenge was when we're having the period as Muslims, we are not supposed to touch the Quran, we are not supposed to pray, and we are not supposed to go to the Duxi, the Madrasa. Now the issue is, I'm told, go to Madrasa, and I can't go to Madrasa. Mm. So what will I do? So just you just go to, to my honest. friends? No, I wasn't going for those three days, but what I was doing is going to my friend's place, chat with them when the time <laughs> So to even return. after you told your mom the No, before time, that. That is the other that. experience that I had. Then when I'm told go to Duxi, I'm like, just run because I can't, you know. You uh, can't tell anyone. Uh, any, anyone. Even in my, my yeah, even my friend, she didn't have a period. I'm the one who had my period before her. I couldn't close, you know, I couldn't disclose with her. So what I usually used to do is go, stay with my friends, chat stories there, or my aunts who used to stay a, a little bit, you know, far away from us, spend my days there, come back. That's how I used to go to Madrasa now. How when many periods did you have before you finally told your mom, you know, uh, my period has started? No, mine, mine is usually five days. Mm -hmm. So when my mom figured out that I'm having this issue, it's the fourth day. But of for your fast period. Yeah, but these, three, uh, these other three days I'm supposed to, you know, hide it from my mom. So I was undergoing that, you know, that confusion. I'm, not, I'm, I'm supposed to go to Madrasa, I'm supposed to read the Quran, I'm supposed to pray. I used to even pray falsely which I'm not even allowed to do. You know, I'll just go pray, pretend. So you would keep up with the pretend? <laughs> for the three, for three yeah. days until my mom found out. <laughs> okay, yeah. so let me hear from you, Esther. What was your first period experience like? Okay, so I was in class seven, and uh, so there were some older girls. Uh, so now we're hanging in the toilets, and we see people staining the toilets, like, so we laugh and laugh. Then my day came, and <laughs> So I uh, just went into the toilet. I didn't know. I didn't know what was happening. So when I'm coming out, I just look back and see a stain. And then the other girls come and just look, because like Esther has started her periods. So now they first they are, they just laughed and all. And then now we started figuring out what to do. We went to the teacher, and then the teacher is like, you know, you girls have to figure out your periods. I can you can come borrowing your pads every time you get a period. And that's your first period. Yeah, it's my first yeah. period. So. Now, so I have to go and ask for permission, and I have to go and ask for a sanitary towel because I can say it like that. And then, and usually for most girls, because I'm sure you've all been here. When this happens to you, that's when you turn a sweater. Oh, then you tie it. You tie around your waist. Luckily, I didn't stain. Uh -huh. I just, I just, it just came. So I, I have, I went home, and then my mom was like, "Mukjanini, why, why, why are you?" Because I was in a day school, and so she was like, "Why are you here?" Then I was like, I didn't know what to tell her. So I'm like, Mom, you know, you know. Then I, I was just like, you know, I have had my first period. And she was like, okay. Now she gave me money to go and get my pads. pads. Now going back to school, you have to explain where you are <laughs> to the boys. You know, the girls have no issue. Why did you go home? Uh, I'm like, no, I didn't have a pen. My ink was over. <laughs> 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 I know. So now it, it became awkward. And now, like, like see, see how you, I was, we were young, we wanted to play around. So you have to wake up and go around the class. And that's when I was scared. Like, this is a strange feeling. Something is pouring outside of, uh, okay, from you. You don't know what's <laughs> happening. Luckily, I had a good science teacher, and he, he explained to us what was happening. I like that. That's powerful mm -hmm. because the person who finally got through to you was a male teacher yeah. Yeah. who explained it to you. Yeah, I loved science, and he was like, you know, these things. We, we used to have fun during, you know, classics is the time you learn about production. And so I think apart from the toilet staining and the girls, I don't think there's something that has ever happened. Let me hear from you, Fina. What is your first period like? Okay, prior to my first period, I was in a boarding school, uh, 13 years of age. So all my classmates had their periods. And I would see them put on the pads, then I'd be like, how do you do this? They would laugh, then I'll show me what to do. So during my first period, 
it, I was 14 years old from one in September. So I just felt something hot. So I talked to my desk mate, then she took me to the dorms. Then I had, my mom just bought me extra pads in case they start while well, I'm at school. Yeah, so I took So you already had that conversation with mom at home? Not with mom, but I, I observed my older sisters, what they would do. So I kind of got the knowledge of how I would handle. But now, you know, you were taught on the normal and mine went excess, so I didn't know what to do. So when you had your first period, yeah. how many days did your period last? My first periods were for seven days. Okay. Then I became sick after that. So like I did what to do, I was like, is it normal for people to become sick or is it now my own adaptation to my menses? Yeah, so after that I just stayed at school and waited to see what will happen in the next period yeah so how was the next period and when did things start getting complicated okay so the next period came after september i stayed october november it came in december when i was at home so for that i remember i had malaria yeah so it was you're sick then the periods are like heavy i always have heavy flows yeah so i just talked to my mom but usually I just slept, yeah, because that's more comfortable for me, yeah, not sitting or anything. And Sophina, I understand for you that uh, you, your period can sometimes last even for 30 days? Yeah. So when did that start? Uh, it was in Form 3. It f came the first week, I was like, normal. My normal is seven days. Then the second week, I was like, uh, maybe it's just, you know, weather. Then now the third week. So you were in a period like, for yeah. over 21 days? It was for a whole month, in fact, uh -huh. until I went to my peer counselor. She was a student in her class. It was during night preps. I was like, you know, I've been having my periods this whole month, and I don't know what to do. I started having joint aches, feeling weak. Yeah, so she took me to the dorm mistress. Then she was like, when it went overboard, like what, after one week, how come you didn't say anything? Was, and I think that's just, a lesson yeah. for anyone who's watching us, that mm -hmm. there is what is defined as normal, which is between five to seven days. Yeah. So anything that goes beyond, you have to actually raise the alarm and seek medical help. Yeah, but I did know that. I thought people are different. So maybe for me, it's also different. Yeah, so that's when I went. Um, she called the hospital, then she was, uh, some medication was prescribed, uh, it was given to me the next day, yeah. So were you fin finally diagnosed why it was that your period would go over and beyond the normal days? Okay, so since I was in school, she just talked to the doctor and explained. Uh, when we closed school, I went home. Then I told my mom what had happened. Then I sh we went to the hospital. I was told it's just some hormonal imbalance. Uh, in fact, the doctor said she can't give me any medicine because I, I was not yet 18 years old and she didn't want to make uh, assumptions. Mm -hmm. So uh, she just told me like there are some sprouts, bean sprouts. She asked me I could take them. Then now let's observe the pattern of my periods. So after it turned 18, that's last year, the same thing is happening. Either it skip or it comes for long. So I went to the hospital. I was given, I was told I have hormonal imbalance. And my mom was like, you know, you've just changed your environment. So let's just give it time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So till today we are giving it time. Maybe and how long has it been be when you, ha, how long has it been? When you say till today, how long has it been? Now? Yeah, okay. So if I trace like last year, uh, September is when I was given the medication. Then now this year in January and in June, yeah. The same thing occurred? Okay, in June I skipped my periods. So in July I went to the hospital. Then now August and September they have come normal, seven days, yeah. 
So, but it's something that you're definitely following up with uh, yeah. a health practitioner. Yes. Okay. Now, remember, I'm inviting you to join the conversation. Let me know what your experience has been like. Uh, as a woman, have you ever felt period shame? And it comes in many waves and forms. For the young girls, it will be usually when your period is starting, you can't talk about it to your peers. But to date, even we as grown women, when you're on your period and you want to go and do the necessary in the washroom, you will really struggle about how do you carry that pad. I want to challenge you. Why can't we as women carry a pad like this? The way you carry your mobile phone. Why can't we carry pads like that and say, you know what, I am on my period and I'm going to do the necessary. So on that note, we'll be taking a very quick break. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the round table. Now, our conversation on today's topic continues menstrual health. Now, I'm just going to break it down to you guys. The reason that we are having this conversation here on this table is because I want you to help me normalize period talk. Periods are normal. We have to teach our girls that them having a period is not something that they should be ashamed of. As a mother, as a big sister, as an auntie, if you have a daughter, a niece, talk to them, let them know that it's very normal. It's nothing for them to be ashamed of because when you hear that a Kenyan girl killed herself because somebody made her feel like having that stain on her dress made her unworthy or not good enough, that is very sad. And that is why I'm Tamima, I'm a woman. I have a period every month. I either use this, a pad. There are some of us who choose to use this, a menstrual cup. There are others who choose to use a tampon. So again, joining me on the table, I have women who will be sharing their stories, period stories, and we're just trying to normalize because at the end of the day, every woman's experience with her period is different. There are those of us who cramp, there are those of us who don't. There are those of us who have heavy flows, there are those of us who have light flows, but we have to talk about it. And this is something that doesn't exclude you as men because you have daughters and you have wives. So I'll introduce my first guest, who is Jadida. Jadida will be our expert of some sort, she has a lot of experience in this department, but above all else, she's a menstrual hygiene advocate. I also have with me Gladys Musinga, and on this side, I have with me Mar Maria Anyango. So again, we are all women, we start from there, and everybody gets their period. And you know, even in the context of talking about getting your period, periods can be complicated. We had Alia from FINA. She's having a very complicated time with her period. And there are women who don't get the luxury of even getting a period. So I want to start with you. Please let me know, what was your first period like? Um, well, I had my first period when I was in, what, class six? I was 12 years old. I lived in an environment full of boys. Like I grew up with brothers, brothers, brothers. And I was so scared to tell my mom so I had to use um, toilet paper, yeah. I used toilet paper like for the first, you know, I'm experiencing something so totally different, blood coming out of my vagina. <laughs> like it's not normal at that age. And nobody had had that you conversation know, with you. You'd, you know, back then you'd have those guidance and counseling moments, but then you'd think this won't happen to me. Maybe when I get to class eight or something, yeah. And then, um, yeah they come. I can't tell my mom. I can't tell the house help. Um, I just figured, let me roll up toilet paper, use it for this period, and then maybe, you know, next month I'd have confidence to talk to somebody about it. But why did you feel that you couldn't tell your mom? Because for me, that's a big one. Mm -hmm. And I think even the ladies that I had earlier on, that came up, that yeah. I felt I couldn't tell my mom. And mothers, listen. Yeah. Um, I grew up with very strict parents. My parents were lecturers. So, I mean, it was do your homework, go to, you know, the basics. Yeah. Usi chosen a boys at this age, nini nini, you know, stuff like that. And um, where? For me to just start even approaching her and telling her, you know, um, I have blood coming out of my vagina. It was definitely a no-no on my end. So you felt embarrassed? Yeah, completely. So it went on. So the next period, I think she noticed the stain because I woke up to get ready to go to school and then she saw a patch of blood and then she was like, oh, okay, uh, then I'll give money to, you know, the house help, she'll buy for you pads and then by break time you can get them because I was in a day school and my school was like five minutes walk from where I lived. Yeah, that happened. 
So, and then the next period, I wasn't still able to tell her. So, you know, the habit, the toilet paper habit went by, went by. I started cutting pieces of clothes, old clothes. Because toilet paper, it's, yeah. it's, 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 it can it do the job. Yeah. Yeah. So I started cutting pieces of clothes. And, you know, that was the norm. I only came to be more comfortable with her, to telling her I need pads when I was going to form one. So you can just imagine. Yeah. And you know from your lesson, because the reason we do this show is literally to teach. Yeah. And this is the story for a lot of young girls. Yeah. And even I remember when I had my first period, I didn't really tell anybody. Yeah. But I was smart. I had some money. I went and bought the pads and I sorted myself. But looking back, I kind of feel like it was easier because I was always in a situation when once it was clear, okay, now this girl is in her period. And we know with girls, once the period comes, there's also that other conversation. Don't play with boys. boys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because now everyone is like, Aka kaneza kutuletea, yeah. a small baby. Yeah. But what I think helps in this case, because depending on the type of relationship you may have with your daughter, or you may have with that young girl who is under your guardianship in your home, it makes it a lot easier when once a girl is on her period to just remove that thing of mommy i'm on my period like you've had even to today as a grown woman it's an embarrassing topic even for you as a mother it's an embarrassing topic still so can you can you imagine what that young girl is going through it would help if as mothers once you know your child is on a period even buy pads in advance the same way if you do shopping like rice unga mm -hmm. always have a packet of pads somewhere yeah. so if you know pads in chukuli or unajua ah i need to restock because somebody is on her period yeah. i kind of feel like it's a smart and very simple way to sort of like normalize the whole idea of periods the same way we buy tissue paper actually tissue is the best example i can use mm -hmm. because we stock up on tissue paper in our homes mm -hmm. why can't we also stock up on pads mm -hmm. because once you have a child who is at that age it is something that now becomes part of their normal what about for you what is your first experience like um mine was just pretty normal i was i was young I was, I think, 12, but I was in class 8, mainly because I skipped some classes. Um, so by the time I was in class 8, I think I knew everything about uh, menses. Uh, because I was in a rural school in Kajiado, um, Maasai girls come to school pretty much late. So for me, since class 1, I had girls who were menstruating. And the thing, the th actually what made me very comfortable with periods is that uh, from time to time, girls used to borrow pads in class, and that's how I was like, hmm, okay. Then we had the talks once in a while, people would come and, and talk to us about periods. So by the time I was getting my menses, I think it was one afternoon, I went to the toilet and boom, I had a stain. So I knew, mm -hmm, yeah. they are here. So I just went home, I remember going home, I was very excited, I don't know why, but I was very excited, told my mom who was equally excited, then just told me, of course, umekuwa sasa end of story yes. mm -hmm. and don't play with boys that's a company that conversation yeah. Mm. yeah and have you had any embarrassing moments with your period um not much i wouldn't say i can't i can't think of any but i was just sharing with my friends recently i so for me i don't get cramps the normal cramps just before the period but my ovulation is very painful so I remember I think last month I was traveling and when when I like got to the place I was going I had to take a cab and when I got to the cab the um, the cab driver I was in real pain so the the, the cab driver was like eh hey, madam you know I'm going to go sana and for me I was like why did you think the back and then I started the conversation with him just because, of course, we are ending the period shame. Mm -hmm. So I started the conversation with him that actually it is not my back, but, you know, and I think the embarrassing thing was the how uncomfortable he was. Right. With me just telling him about ovulation and that you can actually get pain and why they should be a little bit more uh, comfortable with other people and with their women, their wife, their sisters, for them to just understand that at times it is it is just not merry going round. And I believe I'm having this conversation with both men and women. Mm. So I want to challenge you as a woman: Is your period something that you talk about with your man, or as a father? Is have you had the period conversation with your daughter? Ama yon ya mama, inachiwa tu mama, because I know you have a different experience with that. Yeah. Um, 
thank you for having me again. Uh, as my experience is pretty, it was pretty normal because uh, I was in a primary school where we used to have such conversation. And my mom was a teacher, by the way. So uh, we used to talk about uh, periods, and it was normal. Of course, I remember when I was in class six, I went home with a pack of pads. And my mom was like, hey, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. So after, I think, uh, I, I lost my mom. And then I moved to, to Mombasa with my auntie. So I used to live with my auntie. So I remember I, I got my, my first period. I was in 14, class 8. And I remember I was like, whoa, wow, I'm finally becoming a woman. And I went to my aunt. I was like, aunt, this has happened to me. And then she was like, do you know what that is? I was like, yeah, I know what it, what it is. But I, I was a bit naive because I remember my teacher used to tell me that when you have periods, you, you need to do a lot of exercise, you need to jump a lot so that you can prevent the cramping. Yeah. So I told my aunt and then she was like, no, you're not supposed to do that. And then she was like, now you've become a woman. Of course, she gave me my, my first pad and uh, it was a lovely experience. But of course, my first experience, I used to have bad crampings. It was very bad. Like my left, I can't even use my left uh, leg, it, it became numb. But as time goes by, actually at this point, I don't feel a lot of cramping like before. At so all. I'm good, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I challenge <coughs> my viewers. Do you guys talk about periods with your significant other? Is that a conversation yeah. you ever had with a boyfriend? Is it normal <laughs> or do they feel uncomfortable? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so for me, for me, I'm a menstrual hygiene expert. This is what I do in day in, day out. And um, so I started, I started an organization from this and I am a Maasai girl. You can imagine how it is just difficult to talk about anything sexual. And the reason why I started the organization, of course, was why girls were borrowing pads in school. So with time, I just grew. I got so much interest uh, now after campus and everything. I got so much interest in menstruation and just helping the girls. But then I realized that it is more than just um, it is more than giving pads. So yeah, I started the, the, the conversations and it got to a place that I had done schools and I am now done with schools and I had to move the conversation to the parents. I would not say, first I think my dad was very uncomfortable because I used to stock all the boxes of pads at home. So it's like, hmm, okay. <laughs> you know, imagine, I yeah. know he never said yeah. anything, but I am very sure that yeah. he was very uncomfortable. And then now it moved because, okay, I'm not dating. So the, the significant others to me then would be the elders in the community when I go talk to the in, parent, in parents meeting and everything. It is very difficult for me being a woman and for me being a young girl to talk to men, especially Maasai elders about menstruation, but I have been able to do that. Because so you're doing it from an advocacy point yes. of view. But still... I have this conversation with anyone, anywhere. I was just, I think when we were outside there, Maria had pads and I was telling one of her friends, just carry them like that. That's how we're going to start the conversation. Right? Yeah. Yes. I'm challenging all yeah. the working women because <laughs> I want to ask, <laughs> true, true, probably yeah. in the yeah. office. Yeah. 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 I'll confess, and this is something that I had to be very conscious of because you're like, okay, you need to go and do the necessary, but you strategize on how to carry that <laughs> I know. pad. That's right. eh? yeah. mm -hmm. And that's why you're seeing the company is now becoming a bit more creative because mm. when you carry yeah something that's colored like this nobody will know yes. what it is what you're it carrying is. Mm. Yeah. but why do we because that is part of period shape. yeah, yes. yeah. I, I can say because I, I i do this as a business on the side and i i, I meet a male uh, species i was like hi i'm selling pads They're like whoa 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 i'm like what's wrong with that you can buy it for your wife you can buy it for your daughter what's wrong with that you like so they're like maybe i bought for my my other, significant yeah, other and mm -hmm. then she refused so i said to bring for my wife i'm like no you can just buy pads as the, the same way you're buying bread mm -hmm. and take to your wife and take to your daughter in fact try this try this new pads. we're like oh maybe that's just a marketing strategy i'm like no it's not marketing strategy mm -hmm. you need to carry these things to your wife because it's normal there's nothing wrong with that yeah Absolutely. so we need to make our men realize that hey buying pad it's okay but i think some men uh, they're yeah. comfortable because I've seen men in supermarket mm. like they're calling like will someone take a gani cortex fine or what well, you know always anything mm. and they think so the conversation is still going on and that's so, the whole yeah. idea yeah. behind normalizing yeah. the period conversation it's mm. a biological process and I think earlier on you said something that in our culture 
the period is correlated with sex. Yes. Yeah. So it's like it's not talked about, and it's probably because once a girl gets to that age, then you start. You, you now need to start having the whole reproductive health conversation mm -hmm. with her. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, as a parent, and this really, I, I like that even you stressed. You went to schools, you mm -hmm. talked to the students, but then you realized, yes, I've talked to the kids, but I need the parents to actually support me yes. in this mm -hmm. because it's the parents who should avail the pads mm -hmm. to the girls. Because if you look at the statistics in this country, there are places whereby girls will sell their bodies just to be able to afford pads, which is very sad. We are very talking sad. about 2019 yes. in Kenya. Yes. A girl somewhere is selling her body because she wants to get money to buy pads. When all it takes is we ourselves and there's, there's something that has been recurring on the table. Everyone keeps saying when people come to our school, they will talk to us. Mm -hmm. I want to encourage any organization that does that because you're doing an amazing job. Mm -hmm. I can yeah. actually stand here today and say, I learned how to use a pad because of such an organization. Mm -hmm. yeah. You come to school, you talk to the girls, so keep up the good work. Mm -hmm. Because really, we have to normalize periods. Yeah, because I was actually telling her, um, we need to move from just sensitizing the girls and the boys in school and also move to the parents. Because how many parents are actually comfortable to talking to their own kids about periods? Mm. Or is it just something that they have to talk to them about when they get to that time, you know, that they're starting their first menses or that particular time of the month, like on a regular basis, you know, Absolutely. per se, yeah. The thing about a period, them. you can never guess when your period will start. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So you could say it's something you're leaving to the schools, but the period could start at night in your home. It could yeah. it could start in school, and the whole con the whole idea is to build a safe environment. Yeah. So if it happens in school, and also to applaud fellow girls, because how many times has it hit you, mm -hmm. and you're asking your friend, "Do you have a pad?" Yeah. Mm. Like personally, I always have them in my handbag. Yes. Mm. Because you never know. Yes. Yeah. You could have counted your days, but that could be the month that life happens on you, and you're stressed, and you're early. Yes. Yeah. And then so, something else. Huh? Mm. They have a friend of mine. She has a baby. That she's a baby and she has a at class one. Mm -hmm. Then how do you explain that? So at class one, the baby should be around six, seven years. Uh, yes, I'm like she's okay, and then I'm like, oh my god. So if you're waiting for the teachers to te to teach them, so I'm like, mm -hmm. she's in class one, mm -hmm. yeah. or you know, most of them she's at home. Like so, you're like, is she going to be a baby or is mm -hmm. she going to be a woman? Because I'm thinking. If she plays with boys, think, she's going to get sorry. pregnant. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I think that's why it's very important to have pre-menac education. Yes. Yeah. Menac being the first period. Mm -hmm. So it is very important. And that's why now we are um, really emphasizing of uh, comprehensive sexuality education yes, in school. Yes, yeah. Because then this is where the, the baby or rather the girl, yeah. the young girl, the kids should be taught that this is what your body does, that puberty is coming and everything. Yeah. Why we insist on, on pre-menarche um, pre education is because you can, for women, we can get pregnant even before seeing the first period because then the egg is already released. Mm. So it means that if you have any sexual intercourse at that point, mm -hmm. that you're going to become pregnant. So very many people think that I Pregnancy must, yes, after, after the period, the period yeah. but you can actually get period before. Funny story, something that you've, t s funny and sad. I have had stories where mothers have actually called me telling me to talk to their daughters because they are promiscuous. Mm -hmm. Then you're like, how? You know, that is something serious. Mm -hmm. So I am willing to go talk to the kids. Then I go talk to the kids and find out like what is wrong. And they tell me, but we just started our period. Mm -hmm. So these mothers do not know that the onset of periods, like is puberty or something, like you, they are old. They think that because you see, for us Maasai's, women used to get married very young. Mm -hmm. So you find that a mother was married off before her period. Then she started having sex, then the period came. So for her, she knows when you start having sex is when your period comes. So it's not yeah. a stage. It's not a stage. They relate it with an action. With an action. My daughter gets yes. her period, and if, if she mm. gets it early, yeah. because you know there are girls who get it early. Yes. Because yes. yes. the yes. average age is twelve or thirteen years old. Yes. Yeah. But if my girl is getting it at 10, 11 years old, mm. so what they believe is that that child is promiscuous. Yes. yes. So that's why mm. education 
for for parents is very key yes. yeah. and that's why we we insist that we must get out of the schools that's and true. go to the parents because th still it's the same parents who buy the products yes yeah. absolutely yeah. and yeah. just yeah. still in the breadth of normalizing periods because you mentioned something how do you start that conversation with a six-year-old again it's normalizing periods mm -hmm. as a mother as a big sister when you when you're in the house don't hide it mm -hmm. explain to them this is a pad a pad is used by women during that time of the month. Like, let us normalize this conversation as much as possible. Mm -hmm. As always, let me know what your views and comments are on today's topic. We'll be going on a very quick break. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the roundtable. Now, our conversation on today's topic continues. We are normalizing the period conversation. Joining me right now is Angela Waweru, who is the founder of Sister Speak Global. You may have heard about the Heels for Pads initiative, and I think that's a beautiful initiative that you're doing. So probably just let's start off from there. What is Heels for Pads? Um, so we are three of us who uh, our company is called Sister Speaks Global, and the basis of it is to uh, bring women into the conversation, you know, create safe spaces for them and do career development events. So when we did our first event in April, May was the month for Menstrual Hygiene Day. So we wanted to target the women that we don't necessarily meet on a daily basis. So one of uh, the co-founders, Mo, had this idea of we all have heels. Um, and the one common thing as women is periods, but we can't, she couldn't give her heels to her cousins because they don't fit the same size. So we came together we're like, okay, what if we all took out the heels that we don't wear in our shoe rack and then get donations for pads and distribute to women and girls in need, and whether in slum areas or rural areas. So that's how Heels for Pads was formed. And initially it was just something that we were gonna do uh, once, a m once a year uh, for, for our company, but it became bigger than us. And um, now we are approaching five months and we've supported over 2,000 beneficiaries, have managed to go to five counties, and we wanna keep on going. And you're doing an amazing job. So I'm just going to kick this off. You, you have two pairs of heels from me. Yes. Yes, for this initiative. Yes. And of course, if you're watching, if you want to reach out to them and you want to donate a pair of heels. And we know us girls, eh? <laughs> I mean, how many pairs of shoes can one oh, woman really wear? I know. Let me tell you. So all you're asking for, it's not even money, it's not even time, it's those shoes that you don't wear. Yeah. Please reach out to them and how can people uh, uh, get in touch with you? So you can um, obviously follow us on the Instagram or Twitter. Which is the Heels for Pad? No, no, no. At Sister Speaks 254. Mm -hmm. Or they can email us on info at sisterspeaksglobal.org. Um, so what we do with the heels, uh, Mary can give me her pair of heels, I can sell them to you, but um, instead of you giving me money, you give me an equivalent of four packet of pads, or wow. more. Is, so pads are wish. the currency. Mm -hmm. Pads are the currency. And I know that uh, Maria Onyango, you're mm -hmm. doing an amazing job when it comes to pads, because we've seen the conversation on social media whereby women will complain that when I use a certain brand of pads, mm -hmm. either I'm going to have an irritation, I'm going to have a reaction, and now we're seeing that you know, in 2019, there is the, this is called the menstrual, the cup. menstrual cup, exactly. And then now we have tampons, we have pads, mm -hmm. and at the same time, we have the reusable pads. Mm -hmm. And usually it comes from a point of certain women will say that when I use certain brands of pads, unfortunately, I end up feeling mm -hmm. sick or I end up having infections. So you've come up with a very nice solution to mm -hmm. that. Yeah, actually, our brand is called Sure Health. And it has an iron. That is the catch. Can I? Can I? Mm -hmm. Yes, you may. Yeah. No, but that is the catch. It's very normal. This is a pad. Yes, yes, yes. This yes. is the catch. The green strip. Mm -hmm. This is the catch. As in any pad that has this green strip, that is an iron bit. So what is the work of an iron? First, uh, it helps in people who are, who are having serious cramps. It helps by continuing use of this pad. And then it has a negative uh, oxygen that it releases. So with that, it keeps you fresh. Because you find that most women, when they are having their periods, they tend to have bad odor. So it helps in the, you know. So this is fresh. purely organic. Yes, this is purely organic. So is, it, what, what is it made cotton. from? This is 100% cotton, uh -huh. you can touch it. I'm, tr I'm trying to open one and I'm like, what's going on? Let's open from here, <laughs> here. Okay. Yes. See, I'm learning something. <laughs> <laughs> Just pull it off. Oh, this there you pure, go. Pure contour because okay. women want like, is it cotton? I'm okay. like, yeah, that is the first question they ask. Okay. Then so it's pure, pure, hundred percent pure cotton. Oh, this um, I, I don't think I'm doing it right, huh? Because yours okay. is so okay. simple. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay here. Yeah. No. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Yeah. Mm. So we have uh, 
for right. the three different uh, types of products. Yeah. So this is, you can see it's very long. So this is for heavy. And then that is uh, for light use or normal. Mm -hmm. And then you have another one, a blue pack for normal use. Yeah, you can use it. And then we went say, but this is very thin. I'm like, hey, wait, it, do, it doesn't have to be thick. For it to so be efficient. Exactly, because yeah. it has eight layers. So the absorption rate is very good. Yeah. In fact, when you wear our pads, you, you actually can forget that you're wearing pads because they're very comfortable. The way they're very thin. The absorption rate is very good. So I advise women to try our new pads. It's very good. I think women should go the organic organic way because we say we tell uh, we see our, our government or the NGOs are giving girls the pads which themselves they cannot even use. Mm. So we tell people give our girls quality things even yeah. because in our in our, actually in our house even our house help we, go, we can't tell, uh, ask them how to go and buy pads and that you sell. wouldn't use them yourself. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So we give them what you can use. So I ask people to give our girls quality things. Mm. Yeah, they are a bit expensive, but hey, hey, you know, at the end of the day, it's all about our health. And, so, yeah. and and also we have the menstrual cup, which is yes. another option. So mm -hmm. I've seen this around. I've mm -hmm. seen uh, people doing various interviews on this. And I think the one thing that stands out with the cup is the fact that once you buy it, it saves. It's, it's a savings mm -hmm. because when it comes to pads, you have to buy either one or two packs mm -hmm. every cycle. But once you buy the menstrual cup, it's something that you can have for a certain number of years mm -hmm. without having to go back and reuse it. Mm -hmm. But... Kenyan women, and I'm going to speak just from the heart here, because, you know, for a lot of Kenyan women, we have certain stereotypes yeah. behind the tampon and the cup. Because, ukiangalia <laughs> unashanga, ii, mimi ndo itaningia. Yes? How do, how do I put this inside me? Yeah. So, probably, Jadida, you can help us just break down some of those myths, because yeah. you've experienced using the cup, yeah. and you've said that, you know what, it's actually quite efficient. Yes. Yeah. Um, so... First, uh, what we should put on the table is that we have two types of products, the reusable ones and the disposable ones. With the cups? No, products. Okay. So, all so this, this, all is, this, are is, this is disposable and then yes. this is reusable. reusable. Here okay. we have the reusable, uh, the, the reusable pad. Mm -hmm. So, um, with any product, and that's why she's saying some people would complain, mm. s whatever product that you're using, for any product you must use what is most comfortable with you. Okay. I use the cup because I find it comfortable with you, uh, with me. I use the tampon. I can use anything, actually. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, you must find what is comfortable with sure. you. Mm -hmm. But now for the, uh, ins the ones that we insert inside our bodies is where the catch is. I'll start with the tampon. Tampons come in three different sizes uh, and because of the absorption levels. Mm -hmm. If you get it wrong, trust me, you're in for toxic shock syndrome. And you, that's where now the discomfort and the complications yes, The complications yeah. come. There are some people, and this is for us who think we are bougie and everything, so we use the tampon. The tampon gives you what we call the TSS, to toxic shock syndrome, and it will, it will make you sick. You might think that you're having malaria just by using a tampon. It's because of the different absorption levels of the, of the, of the tampon. So, for example, if you use um, a super on your first day, it means that you do not have enough, uh, the, the absorption level inside you will be so much and it will absorb everything, including the normal, what is supposed to be normal inside there. So you're going to become sick. Yeah. Then when it comes, so, and this is a problem, tampons are quite expensive. Yeah. So very many people do not buy the three packs. They're very small, the, the you'll small pick ones. Just yeah, one you just pick one. If you buy, you'll yes. buy super, like with pads. If yes. you buy a maxi, you're good yeah. for yeah. your entire cycle yes. with yes. a maxi. So people do the, the same for tampons. But you see, if I buy super for my day one and my last day, it'll, it is it's a, a problem. problem because yes. the flow changes. Yes. The flow changes. Yeah. So that is the one thing that we must learn when we're using tampons. Which day is it? How heavy is your flow? And how you're using it? The second thing is the, com the people say it's not comfortable. I, I tell you for sure, if you don't insert it right, yep. that it is going to be very uncomfortable. Yes. One thing that you must learn is the anatomy of our bodies. You must know how you, how you, where your cervix is. Because this one, you're putting it towards your cervix. For a normal girl or a normal woman, the cervix is supposed to face behind. 
like you inserting it towards your back so not the front as not most girls no. or up as uh, most girls people think that we look like this yeah like everything goes straight <laughs> yes. up no it does not go straight up it goes towards the back okay. so when you open this tampon the first thing is you must check the string that is here so you pull it and test if it is it is okay then with this finger you insert it and you know just to support that mm. i wanna challenge you squeeze it to internet kuna school of google yes. no. kuna youtube kama unataka kujua mengi kuhusu hii topic mm. go and just search how to use a tampon mm. google is an amazing resource and i used google when it mm. came to the grace yes. to this uh, cup. menstrual cup mm. yeah. yeah i okay. think the grace cup you've done an amazing job yes. because i keep saying the grace cup <laughs> yes. yeah, yeah. But when it comes to the menstrual and cup, and I'll mm. be I'll be honest, the first time I saw this as a woman, it reminded me of something in my kitchen, <laughs> and I was like, how? <laughs> But I then know. when I got educated, and I'm being honest, yes. don't judge me, I'm being honest, <laughs> yes. and I'm being honest because you see, the thing is, most women might not make the right choice yes. according to your budget or what you can afford, yeah. or what mm. is efficient, Even your because where you're you know, from. because mm. you have a stereotype. Because I'm sure the same way, if we went somewhere and we were donating pads, mm. everyone would take them. But mm. you go somewhere. You're donating this yeah. you'll find them somewhere But thrown it's down skeptical. and yeah. it's an Sometimes. education yeah, sure. thing yeah. yes. so tell me what makes this efficient as well okay so let me just show how to use this mm -hmm. before answering that so for the menstrual cup it's the same as this tampon you must insert it until it's comfortable but again you must know where like the size first you must know the level of your cervix it's not a one size fits all your cervix depending on where your cervix is there's some people who have a higher cervix there's some people who have the medium and some lower so by that it will de uh, depend with what size of cup you're going to use then when you look at the cup it has these small holes and it's because when you insert it then it creates a vacuum and this cup cannot cannot move when it's inside you the uterine walls is going to hold this and it's not yeah. going to move so there are two ways of putting it in This cup is made of medical silicon. So you just So sick it to even yet mama It's made of medical silicon. So you either just uh kunja uh, tumara mbili or you do this with your cup, you pull it, uh, with your finger you just pull That it. That seems more practical. Yes. Yeah. Actually this is more comfortable but yes you just pull it and insert. And you insert it. When you insert it because you already lubricated but it is just going to slide in. But again, you're going to insert it until you feel where it's comfortable. Then you release it. When you release it it's going to pop open. And because this is a biology class, I'll remind <laughs> you that uh, <laughs> we bath babies. Uh -huh. yes. So there's a lot that the woman's body can mm. do. So if you want to try this again, I, I I'm I'm challenging you. Go on YouTube, watch a couple of videos, find out more about it and give it a try because and especially in a country where a lot of women cannot afford to buy pads on a monthly basis, mm -hmm. I kind of feel like this would be a very beautiful it solution on, to that. It depends on the area because yeah. we just came from Trukana to donate pads and areas like uh, Trukana or Kitui or areas where water is 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 the problem. Mm. So the the challenges around reusable products is sanitation, sanitation. Yes. and uh, menstrual products and sanitation go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. So you could have access to water, but that doesn't mean that access to water is clean. Mm -hmm. And one of the things about menstrual cups and reusable products mm -hmm. or pads is you need to also have access mm -hmm. to clean water. Mm -hmm. And there's no point giving someone this mm -hmm. if they don't have access to water True. or clean because then now we go back to the original problem where mm -hmm. they end up using other alternatives because they don't want to get diseases. Yes. So there's a lot of as you said, even a modern woman if Even me myself mm. I personally it will take me a long time before I decide I want to use a cup mm. because there's a lot of sensitization that needs to be taken and it's not just for uh, women even men we need to teach men and bring men into the conversation because um, the the we are the giver of life mm. so it's it's as much of a woman's problem as it is a man's problem and i know for you it's interesting it's, it's interesting because when you got your first period it's yeah. your dad yes who actually gave you the talk and walked you through it so what mm. was that like just um, to challenge the men so we had already had the conversation in school and i still didn't understand i mm. went home i remember asking my mom what's this counting 20 i don't understand she's like okay i'll try my best but i think when it happens is when it will the the practicality of it will make sense so i was 12 years of age me and my sister have a 10 year age gap so can't really ask a two year old uh what do i do so i've gone to the toilet and i've seen the spots in the discharge as like I remember this so today's a day but I don't know where my mom puts uh, her, uh, her 
pads in the house. So I'm panicking in the toilet. I'm like, you know what? What's the worst that can happen? I don't know what to do. I don't want to use tissue. Um, so I just went to my dad. I said, my parents have started. I need you to take me to the shop. So didn't even hesitate, didn't make me feel awkward, took me, took me to the aisle. At that time, the, the, there was one particular brand, so it was just easy. There wasn't much selection of tampons. Mm. So got the pads, I knew how to use it. And so when my mom came, she was panicking. I said, no, it's cool. You know, dad, dad's already sorted. And even now, at my big old age, we can always, if we can't, if we've got cramps and can't leave the house and there's nothing, we can always call our dad and say, you know, on your way, please buy us pads. So for me, I advocate for men to be part of this conversation because yeah. it's, it's, it's how we end period shame and it's how we end period stigma because it is not a problem. Yes. It's a normal thing. It's biology. Yeah. It's the most natural thing. That's where you came from as a human being. Yes. That process, yes. right? Well, remember, as always, I love hearing from you. So let me know what your experience has been with the period because this is a conversation I hope to keep having on Real Talk just to normalize periods and as well if you want to reach out to any of the ladies that i have here on the table whether it's to support the heels for pads you can check them out at the bottom of your screen the information will be there if you want to reach out as well to maria and uh, find out more about her organic pads you can also check out her information on the bottom of your screen so as we wind up very quickly and we are all women and i find that in this life as long as you're living you never stop learning yes, yes. and when it comes to your period if you had some sort of Period advice, what should you give? And I want to go first because I don't, I don't want anyone to swag jack mine. Eh? <laughs> okay. So mine is, and it's funny we were talking about it earlier, it's a lot of girls usually, whether it's your first period or as a woman, you will stain. Mm -hmm. You will stain, you will find yourself, mistakes will happen because yes, you can feel that my period is coming, but a lot of the time it will not make an appointment and say I'll be here at this time. Mm -hmm. So stains do happen. And when that happens, cold water is a wonderful solution. Do not go by jig. Take whatever has been stained, soak it in cold water, wash it off with cold water, and you'll find that it works wonders. And it's something that most girls actually don't know. Because someone mentioned earlier, and actually it was Gladys, that she buys jig. <laughs> and I'm like, I remember that yeah. from home science in yeah. primary school. It's mm -hmm. something that we were taught by the teachers, mm -hmm. and especially for you girls. When you get to that stage in life, period stains are best washed with cold water voila that's yeah. mine mm -hmm. yeah so i think gone are the days when when a woman is administrating she's dirty as in or she cannot supposed to as in go to the altar or sit next to others i think we need to end that so i think my advice is when you have that stain just calm down because it's normal and just you can talk to the next person you can ask but it i, I advise women to walk with your pads in your bag mm. just simple just just be prepared because you never know when it's going to happen to you so. and all that being prepared be yeah. a sister's keeper yeah. because yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Exactly. that's what i do yeah, yeah. you can yeah. give jedida yeah. yeah yeah so for me i think i'm going to talk to um people who are coming into this space of the menstrual movement i just want to say that um it is time we end the stigma because when we talk about uh, products, uh, we should give girls choices. It does not mean that a girl, is, because a girl is needy, she does not uh, have a choice. Mm. Uh, that being said, I also think that um, hiding or concealing the um, the menstruation, the, the blood that comes with menstruation, I don't think concealing it effectively is going to end this. So yes, we can give the girls products, but we need to talk about period stigma. Yes. Absolutely. What about you, Angela, as we wind up? Um, I always say this when I meet the girls, period is power, full stop. So whether you get it, whether you don't get it, you remain powerful. Mm -hmm. uh, a female president bleeds yeah. and a, a school student will bleed. So um, always, even when, when it happens, when you least expect it, be powerful, be proud about it. Don't be ashamed about it. Well, there you've had it. So today's conversation all about normalizing periods, ending period shame in Kenya. Let me know what your views are on today's topic. Thank you so much for staying with us. I value you as a viewer choosing to stay with us. And of course, just participating. If And again, I'll stress it. If in any way you can assist in your organization, whether it's going to schools, talking to girls, donating pads, do it because you'll be part of the solution. That's it from me, Tamima. Until next time, this has has been a Real Talk Roundtable, girls. Yeah. Thank you for having yeah. me. Yeah. Special thanks to E Plus for medic and ambulance services.